Pearl Davis has quickly become TikTok's biggest sensation as she took a stand against women who want traditional men but aren't willing to be traditional women. We'll be responding to a couple of her videos today. You won't want to miss this hot debate. Take a quick moment to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. This video is sponsored by Canyon Foot and Ankle. From simple nail care to advanced trauma and reconstructive care, their podiatrists have the training and skills needed to resolve even the most complex cases. Treat your feet to the exceptional care they deserve. None of us in here are, can be considered traditional women. And back then, an average guy could get a traditional woman. And now what does he get? He gets a boss bitch, a boss babe, a girl that's been ran through. He gets an ex-ho. He gets a born again virgin. Like and what do this I is get? as as women, yeah. this is what what do we get? We still get protection and provisioning. Are you sure? And I, the, yeah. the average yeah. the average yeah. salary that looking for the average, that's, uh, not I mean, okay, okay, but here's here's the thing. The average salary could cover an apartment. And, but the thing is, like, women, we want this lifestyle that's not even realistic nowadays. Mm -hmm. Like, we want men that make more than we do, mm -hmm. and we want them to pay all of the bills. But it's like, we record, we all have our nails done. We have, um, we get our hair dyed. We have makeup. We have all of this stuff that costs money because we want this lifestyle. And I've had girls come on my show, and I say, would you, would you date an average guy for companionship? But you would have to go down in lifestyle. And they say, no, we're addicted to lifestyle. Traditional women are even more rare among mid-singles. Do women expect men to provide more lifestyle than they can afford on their own? And if they do, does she expect him to reduce his lifestyle to subsidize hers? If so, what does he get in return? I know I'm not one of those women. Yeah, I think Pearl's pointing to a stereotype that exists for a reason, that you know, women just want a guy with bucks. I mean, I had a coaching client tell me recently, he's probably in his 60s, and he said, women just want a guy that looks like Mitt Romney and has his money. Well, I mean, there is a little bit of truth to that. Are they so shallow that they only want money and they're just looking for the bigger, better deal? Uh, some, yeah, but is that true of all women? I don't think it's true of the one I married. No, I did want someone who was financially wise, who, would be able to contribute to a family in the way that would allow us to co-create in a healthy way and, and be able to contribute to society. I care more about financial security than I do about lifestyle. In fact, I would say that in terms of how often I go to the salon, it hasn't changed from the time I was a single mother to now. Yeah, she actually encourages me to do more self-care stuff than I used to do as a single guy. It's true. Now, the other night, Kathy and I were watching this movie called Ticket to Paradise with George Clooney and Julia Roberts. It's about this middle-aged couple whose daughter takes her post-graduation trip to Bali, this beautiful paradisiacal setting where she falls in love with this very handsome young man and is going to get married. Her parents come to Bali to try to talk her out of this crazy thing of marrying this kid that she barely met. So the, the movie is kind of this zany, madcap sort of comedy about all of their plotting to keep this marriage from going ahead. And of course in the movie, the, the kid that she's gonna marry is portrayed as just almost perfect. He's handsome, he's kind, he's solicitous of her. He's, you know, he's like everything you would want for your daughter. The only problem that the parents are seeing is that they've only known each other a few days. And anyone can fall in love in Bali. Right, I mean, it's, it's on vacation. Like intoxicating how beautiful it is. But Kathy made the point that this was almost an unfair place to go because you're bound to fall in love there. It's, it's so beautiful and romantic. And then she made the point that, you know, the parents are looked at as being kind of square for not supporting this marriage when their daughter had only known this guy a few days. And she was gonna throw away a law degree. Right, to live in Bali. And so Kathy's making all these points and I said, yeah, I see your point. And yet 
there's something deeper that I think I need to explain. Kathy knows this, but I spent year two and three of my first marriage in American Samoa, in a tropical island in the South Pacific with beautiful aquamarine water like you see in this movie, jungles and waterfalls and beautiful pools. and I mean, just one of the most beautiful places you could ever imagine being. And at times later on when my life has been difficult, when I was dealing with a difficult marriage and a wife that seemed to love me, you know, depending on the balance in my bank account, the complexity of that situation, and then the complexity of trying to develop a career here in America, sometimes in hard economic times. There were times when I think I just sort of escaped into this fantasy of, what if I just disappeared and went back to that tropical island and married a girl that was more simple and who didn't worry so much about material things? And I think there was a certain part of me that just sort of longed for that kind of simplicity in a beautiful place and thought, man, wouldn't that be great? And I think that movie kind of awakened that little part of myself in me. Now, you know, I was with my former wife in that beautiful tropical paradise and it didn't change everything to make our marriage perfect. I think we have to, you know, when we look at a movie, we have to take it with a grain of salt because it's created for our entertainment. It's created to bring that fantasy to the surface. Yet, I think there is a fundamental longing in a lot of men to be in a marriage where the person they're with isn't so demanding and you know, critical and disappointed in us. You know, I think that movie in a way brings that kind of thinking to the surface. And I think that's why the girl throws away her law degree. It's like, hey, I belong here. She says that, I belong here. You watch that and you look at the beautiful surroundings they're in and how nice the people are. And you think, yeah, maybe I belong there too. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, do what makes you happy. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what it's saying. Well, I never feel like I've been super materialistic or high maintenance, if you will, like in terms of the way she talks about it, constantly needing a lifestyle that needs to be funded by my man. Like, I've never been that way. I know that there's a lot of women who are, and I can see why it could be problematic to a man who doesn't want to just come along and be a paycheck. He doesn't right. want to just come along and take care of someone's lifestyle at his own expense. Right, and honestly, that was one thing that I feared a lot as a mid-single man is that I was gonna get with somebody who just viewed me as a paycheck. I remember a woman early in my mid-single years, I was not financially doing well. I mean, I the divorce had affected me pretty badly in the financial realm and I, I couldn't afford a lot of even the basics. I wasn't looking to get married at that point. I wanted to rebuild my finances, but I was dating and so forth to socialize. And, you know, she really called me on the carpet and said that under the proclamation on the family, I had a duty to provide better, to marry her and provide for her and do all these things that she couldn't do for herself. And she told me in the middle of this, by the way, that she had been fired from six jobs in a row after short tenures and basically thought it was just easier for men to work and uh, make life easier for women. And I, I remember thinking, oh wow, sign me up for that. You know, isn't that, isn't that awesome that I'm gonna come along and rescue an incompetent person from her incompetence and provide her with luxury and wealth. So you think that Pearl is right in the sense that men don't want to sign up for that? Yeah, I mean, I think well, what's in it for them if, the, if that's the paradigm, you know? Wh why would he want to do that? So women, ask yourselves, are you looking for a man to solve your financial problems? Do you think that it's a man's job to take care of you? I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting a partner to support your family, to support a family that has both a man and a woman in it, that has a, a marital partnership, that has you know a father figure for your kids. It makes sense you would want those things, but we want to be careful about how we want them and why we want that. And what are we offering in return? And are we doing it in a way that we're trying to fill or compensate for an insufficiency in ourselves? 
one of my former dating partners who had a high school education, but was making a six figure income herself. She was making more than I was at the time. She used to say all the time that a man is not a financial plan. And because she was capable of, of earning plenty of money herself, she never really worried about what I earned. And I was doing fine at the time we were dating, but it wasn't a worry to her because she didn't need me to come along and solve her problem. And being financially wise is something that has always been important to me so that I can choose a man rather than need one. Right. Women leave, women divorce men 70 to 80% of the time.